Welcome to The Greenhouse. I'm Alex. It's March 8th, International Women's Day, so what I'd like to do is take you behind the scenes and show you some of the things I do when I'm making climate change videos. Come on in. Okay, so when we make videos about climate change, there are a number of different things that I think are really important that everybody needs to understand about climate change. And the challenge is to present those in a way that people can figure stuff out for themselves. And that's what this series of videos that I work on is all about. Um, today, we're gonna be doing uh, two different renewable energy videos. So we have one about solar panels. And this one is fun because we're gonna take these little tiny glass slides and turn them into miniature solar panels that are actually gonna light something up. And this one is a little bit less work for me because somebody else has already figured out how to do it. And I'm just gonna show you how that goes. Um, the other one is about uh, wind power. So we have all these pinwheels. And this one is more challenging and more typical because it's an activity that I'm developing from scratch. And so I have to figure everything out, starting with, um, what is this actually going to be about and then working through how you would go about doing it yourself. It's interesting because um, I was reading an article in the newspaper about offshore wind turbines and how the bigger the wind turbine is the more power it generates and of course this is something I already knew but it wasn't until I read it in the newspaper that the little light bulb went off and I said oh I can take my colleague Ingrid's activity that she developed for very young learners where she takes a paper pinwheel and uh, connects it to a little paper cup and if you blow on the pinwheel you spin it and it actually lifts the paper cup up so we're showing how this pinwheel can do work and i thought wouldn't it be cool if we could take ingrid's paper pinwheel activity and adapt it so that we could actually work with pinwheels of different sizes and show how the bigger pinwheels are going to generate more power and uh, it turns out she can do that but the process of doing that involves designing the experiment, setting it up, and then running it over and over and over and over and over. And so I spent a lot of my time here in the greenhouse doing this same experiment literally hundreds of times um, in order to make sure that it's going to work every single time that I can write a set of instructions that anybody could follow that will make it work. Um, I, need to, I need to measure everything. I need to measure the distance from the fan to the pinwheel, the height of the cup that we're lifting, um, and, then, uh, and then write that up so that anybody could follow the instructions and figure out how to do it. I also have to repeat it under every possible scenario I can think of so that somebody who's working at home or in a classroom with different materials can still do it and can still succeed. The other thing that we really like to do is use the simplest materials possible. So we actually make the pinwheels out of construction paper instead of going out and buying something at the store. This will work too, but how much better is it to do it with something that you made yourself? Um, so we want to keep it simple, we want to make sure that it's robust, and we want to make sure that at the end of this experiment, anybody who does this is going to look at their results and say, whoa, that is so cool. So that is what we're going for. And for me, it requires uh, coming up with the inspiration for the project, figuring out how to do it, designing it, uh, test driving it up, down, and sideways. And then um, we also need to include the math that governs these, these processes because math is what gives science the predictive power that it has and makes it different from other fields of endeavor. So we always want to have some sort of equation or graph um, that, that people are going to be able to connect to these activities and then hopefully understand each one better because they understand both the physical activity and the mathematical basis for it. Um, often I'll have to draw some animations to try to explain how things work. And then um, ideally we will actually go out into the field someplace and connect these small scale activities with something that's actually happening in the real world. Um, to do that we uh, will film different things. Um, sometimes we might use some different tools. 
uh, in a little bit this afternoon. We're going to take this out. This is a drone, um, and it's going to allow us to film uh, solar panels from a from a different vantage point, which is really pretty fun. So um, let's go take some drone footage. So one of the things that's important to do once we develop our small scale experiments in the greenhouse, we need to compare those to the real world and to larger projects. So today we're standing in front of a solar farm that's operated by Cornell University and we're going to take a drone and we're going to fly some video over the solar panels so that we can include it in a later educational film. So let's put the drone together. Here we go. I'm going to get the little arms out. Battery in. Get our propellers on. Okay, so good. And we've got a camera. Mounted on a nice gimbal. And then we operate the drone with a remote control, and that's got my cell phone attached to it because the cell phone app is going to let me see what the drone is seeing while we're flying it, and it gives me some other controls. So, let's launch. The drone is a great tool for looking at the environment for a couple of reasons. Obviously, it can go places I can't, and it gives us a perspective that we'd never get if we were stuck standing on the ground. Here we're cruising at an altitude of 100 meters. We're flying over one of three groups of solar panels that together produce 18 megawatts of electricity. I don't know how many panels we're looking at here, but notice that although they were covered with snow during a recent storm, the snow melts off once the sun comes out. And that's what you need for maximum energy output. Upstate New York isn't known for its abundant sunshine, but you don't need to be in a desert for solar panels to work. If it's less sunny, you just need more panels. So it's really an economic issue. It's not one of insufficient sun. For me, being outside is the part of my job I love the most. Once I finish filming, I'll have to sit in front of my computer and the video editor for a while. But the trade-off? is I get to fly the drone. Okay, we've got some good footage, so let's come on in for a landing. Woohoo! All right, so now what I'm gonna do is offload the videos and um, I will see you when we upload our next climate video.